I have high hopes. No, that's not true. I want to have high hopes, but <laughs> I don't necessarily, well, well, I guess time will tell. Hey everybody, today we have purchased the Bucklow's Lutu 32 Air Fork from Amazon for one of my son's bikes. We're gonna do a quick teardown of this fork to see if it's really any good. I don't know, we paid $136 for this fork. At $136, you have to think you're gonna get what you pay for. And I know that, you know, to get a really good fork, I probably should be spending upwards of three, four, five hundred dollars $500. But for my son's bikes that I usually spend that much total on their bikes, I was looking for a cheap upgrade. If this were something for a grown adult, maybe even my older boys, I'd probably say no. But we're gonna tear this down and see how safe is it really, and is it really worth the money. When you buy these things from Amazon, I don't know what the company actually thinks they are. Is it Bucklow's? Is it Lutu? It's got another uh, name on here, Wang. Like, I don't know. I don't know where it's coming from. The packaging was okay. There's absolutely no instructions in the box. It kind of is what it is. I think you, they just assume <laughs> you know what you're getting yourself into when you buy a cheap fork. As we look on the fork down here, Andrew, can you focus in on here? It even says, use only for leisure cross-country riding. Do not use for free ride, downhill, dirt jumper, or any hard riding. So, be warned. Uh, it even has a little bit of instructions here for how much pressure to ride in the fork. It's got the rebound adjust here. We'll, we'll show that off here in just a minute. We've actually taken it all the way out. Uh, let's see, what else we have? This is the lockout here. So your compression and your lockout. And it's got a spot for your air right here. And we will take a second and show that off here in a minute. But other than that, I have to say the fork looks really nice. I like the red accents. Uh, we actually got for my son's bike some, you know, a red stem. And so everything kind of matches nicely, right? It's going to look, when you see it all together, I think it's going to look nice. But we all know that looks are not everything. Uh, so anyway, let's take a look. Let's do a few tests on this. All right, let's air this up. All right, we're just under 50 pounds right now. Let's air that up to about 60. Okay, there's 60 right there. So it seems to, to hold the air pretty nicely. All right, let's do some tests. All right, let's get down here nice and low, Andrew. We'll push that all the way down there. The rebound is all the way out, so we'll just do some. That's not bad, right? Let's do about half compression here. Kind of feels the same. Ooh, that is locked out. So same, a little bit of play, <laughs> here we'll do one, that feels really locked out on those last two clicks, very little play in there, so that's pretty good for a lockout, right? Let's do some rebound, so we'll go one, two, three clicks, let's see, let's see how many there are for total. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, nineteen, twenty. There's at least twenty clicks in there. So let's go that far. Let's see how the, let's, we'll do increments of five. So one, two, three, four, five. Ready? Feels about the same. Round two, that's 10 clicks. Ooh, it's a little different. Not drastic, but a little bit. Let's do two more on that. It's 12 clicks. That's 12. You can I... hear it, right? Mm -hmm. There's 14 clicks. Sorry. That's a big difference. Yeah. 16 clicks. There's a 
18. <laughs> 20. 20 clicks. <laughs> <laughs> So definitely a difference there. I think that rebound is actually working pretty nice. One other thing I want to show you, Andrew, can you get down here nice and close? I saw a lot of people point out that the brake attachment points were really poorly machined. And these, they look okay to me. Let's try to thread those real fast. You got that? A few turns in. I'll say it's a little tight, but that's not a bad thing. That one is much looser to there. It's a little bit tighter. So at least they're threaded right. So they're not the worst, but they should hold a brake caliper. So I'm, I'm pretty. I'm not disappointed there, but I can see, you can see they just barely covered it with tape and painted on it, right? <laughs> Cheap. Like this is not high quality workmanship. All right, let's start by taking off the compression cap. It's got some ball bearings. And a oh, spring. Wow. Those over there. We'll take off the uh, rebound adjustment. Oh, that's not even. <laughs> that wasn't even tight. Can you see the red oil on my hands? Yeah. That makes me a little. Maybe a little nervous that there's red oil coming out. I think that's going to be a five. Okay, I'll, I'll point out that was tight. I. Did have to crank on that a little bit tougher with my wrench before we started filming. And it's pretty hard to turn with my hands, even though it looks like it's easy with the wrench. Unfortunately, I don't have a socket big enough. What was the biggest socket we had? Like a 24? Yeah, 24 millimeter. So that's probably a 25. You see that? So, gasket and seals look all pretty good. Decent amount of threads in there, and it was in there nice and tight, so I did like that. Okay, we got bottom pieces off, top off, we're going to remove the stanchions. I have to say, these feel like plastic. Doesn't really feel like metal in there. I mean, it's probably metal, but like... That part's definitely plastic. It. <laughs> Let's just say it feels really cheap. How about that? If you look at the inside here, right, this is, these are our pieces. Here's our air side. There's a fair amount of grease in there, but there was no oil anywhere in here. And it looks like this is a self-contained cartridge for the uh, for the uh, rebound side. And that's it. I will say this is so much lighter than a traditional like Suntour coil fork that you would get on like a entry level bike. So there is that. Let's see if we can get this piece off. So here's our little Suntour fork wrench. I'm just gonna put that on there and. That wasn't too bad.
And there's your compression right there. Sorry, there's your rebound. And like I said, it's 100% kind of contained. That's it? That's it. Wow. And that just adjusts how fast the fork comes back out. Uh-huh. So one side's air, one side is your rebound. That is weird. And that's it. That is all the stuff they put into this fork. So. One side's compression for coming down and one side's coming up. Well, one side, yeah, air compression coming down and you're right, just, you got it, Andrew. Okay, so let's put it all back together. Should go back together in just a few minutes. You know what, one more thing, let's check out before we do that. The, these are rubber, not plastic. So, I mean, they've got that going for them, right? Like, it's not totally cheap stuff. I've seen some forks where this is just plastic inside here. So let's get all that grease back in there. Okay, we got it all put back together. Went back together pretty easily. I'm pretty happy with some of the things I saw in there. A little disappointed with others, like the no oil in there. We got it pumped back up to 60. Let's make sure it works again. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I have my doubts, but I have my doubts. You know what I mean? Yep. I will say that it came apart way easier than it went back together. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I'll agree with that. Okay, ready? Let's give it a little test. Make sure the rebound still works. Let's turn that rebound way up. It's starting to work. Oh, yep, there it is. <laughs> okay, make sure the compression still works. Locked out. I am, there's a little more play in there than I'd like there to be. You know that? Yeah, it's not entirely locked. When I'm riding locked out, I don't want there to be any movement. So, that might be important for some people because that's not the way I want to ride locked out. Let's take a look at all the mounts here. Everything looks like it should work just fine. The stickers I was noticing um, were actually coming off already. Yeah, I saw them like coming out a bit. They're a little reflective up here. Did you notice that? There's some like nice reflective material there. I did not notice that. I do like that. There you have it. This fork at $134 not bad hopefully for a cross-country rider my son's size who's he's gonna be about what is he about four foot ten right. <laughs> five foot and about 80 pounds i think this fork's gonna hold up for him i think it's gonna be a better fork and a lighter bike man this thing is so much lighter than what a traditional fork like coil fork would be so there are gonna be a few nice upgrades there i just don't know how long it'll last i have high hopes no that's not true I want to have high hopes, but <laughs> I don't necessarily, well, I guess time will tell. Anyway, if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you've got any good use out of a fork like this, let me know in the comments what you guys found. Uh, if you saw something that I didn't do in the teardown that I should have done, uh, let me know. Anyway, we'll see you guys next time.